and I'm feeling good. All right, let's start with our theme of today's show, <laughs> which is what? what? Go, 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 go. Oh. Uh, the theme of today's <laughs> show, which is uh, religion in court. Because oh. there's a lot of that going on. Oh you know, boy. it didn't end with Dover, Pennsylvania. No, not that. That was just the beginning, not. I think. Uh, and I think, Dennis, we should start with the story you've got from okay. Italy. All right. Prove Christ exists, judge orders priest. Wow. An Italian judge has ordered a priest to appear in court this month to prove that Jesus Christ existed. The case against Father Enrico Ricci, or R Raihi, has been brought in the town of Viterbo, north of Rome, by Luigi Cascoli, a retired agronomist who once studied for the priesthood, but later became a militant atheist. Woohoo! Yeah, we need more of them. <laughs> Senior Cascoli, author of a book called The Fable of Christ, began legal proceedings against Father Rehi uh, three years ago after the priest denounced Signor Cascoli in the parish newsletter for questioning Christ's historical existence. <laughs> Yesterday, Gitano Mutoni, a judge in Viterbo, set a preliminary hearing for the end of this month and ordered Father Rehi to appear. The judge had earlier refused to take up the case, but was overruled last month by the Court of Appeal, which agreed that Senior Cascoli had a reasonable case for his accusation that Father Rehi was abusing popular credulity. <laughs> God, this is beautiful. I, I like abusing popular credulity. What a great phrase. Well, that's a law they yeah, have. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I don't know. You know, this is the kind of thing like they have in France where you can't take advantage of... Well, it's right. not the same law. I'm saying yeah. it's a similar kind of thing. Yeah. It's laws meant to protect people from being taken advantage of, right? It's yeah. anti-scam laws. Yeah. And we need to have more of those here because I don't know of any. Right. Senior Cassioli's some, right? Yeah. Senior Cassioli's contention well, the, uh, echoed in numerous atheist book oh go ahead. The FTC actually uh, has authority to go after scams, but they're very lax about certain things. Like you mm. know, I've written at length about Amway and the FTC has been willing to look the other way about right. a lot Amway? of Amway oh, is that on your blog? <laughs> <laughs> the, the other thing is, is that in our culture, these kind of bunker type scams have to involve money. And in Italy, um, ah. you can be accused even if there was no money involved. Right. Wow. Mm. That's cool. You know, um, Russell's blog makes a great uh -huh. Christmas present. <laughs> <laughs> This actually isn't my blog. It's a website from a long time ago. Okay. This links from your blog, I bet. <laughs> yeah. Senor. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> you, hey, you advertised your stupid game. <laughs> when it came right, hey, my game is not stupid. Wow. <laughs> it's a very excellent game. Actually. Thank you. That I've never played. That would be Living Legends superhero role playing. <laughs> <laughs> Available from RPGnow.com. <laughs> so. Oh, Senior, Cassioli's, <laughs> Senior Cassioli's contention, yes? <laughs> echoed in numerous atheist books and internet sites, is that there was no reliable evidence that Jesus lived and died in the first century Palestine apart from the gospel accounts, which Christians took on faith. There is therefore no basis for Christianity, he claims. <laughs> Senior, God, I love this story. I know. <laughs> Senior Cassioli's one-man campaign came to a head at a court hearing last April when he lodged his accusations of abuse of popular credulity and impersonation both offenses under the Italian Penal Code. He argued that all claims for the existence of Jesus from sources other than the Bible stem from authors who lived after the time of the hypothetical Jesus and were therefore not reliable witnesses. Quite rightly so, I say. Uh -huh. uh, Senior Cassioli maintains that early Christian writers confused Jesus with John of Gamala, an anti christ an anti-Roman Jewish insurgent in first century Palestine. And I, I hope that this court case does not hinge on him yeah. proving that Jesus was in fact just other guy. Yeah. It shouldn't have to do it that shouldn't That's true. be relevant. But that, but that, it but should that, be 
Yeah. Yeah, but that is the thing for the impersonation part. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah, but okay. but yeah, it, it does. Be, it does. It, it is be, weird. It, it I ought to be the church guy's job in the court to prove. To prove that Jesus existed and was who they say he was, right. and not for bringing the, in another thing like the, this is something he has to establish, and right. that's going to be rough. Yeah. Right. Well, uh, we'll see how we'll it We'll see. Church authorities were therefore guilty of substitution of persons. So, uh, the Roman historians Tacitus and Salonus mention, mention a Christus or Christus, but we're writing well after the time of the purported Jesus, and were relying on hearsay. Father Rehe said there was overwhelming testimony to Christ's existence in religious and secular texts. Millions had in any case believed in Christ as both man and son of God for 2,000 years. If Cassioli does not see the sun in the sky at midday, he cannot sue me because I see it and he does not, Father Ray, he said. You mean the elephant in the room? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Senior Cassioli said that the Gospels themselves were full of inconsistencies uh, and did not agree on the names of the twelve apostles. He said that he would withdraw his legal action if Father Rahe came up with irrefutable proof of Christ's existence by the end of the month. <laughs> Uh, this is a, a January story, is it? Uh, yes, I believe so. Do we have a date on the story? On the story? No, we don't. Hmm. Oh, wait. Yes, I have a January okay, story. Okay, cool. So it's this month, Kevin. Yeah, it yeah. might all be over this month. <laughs> That's right. Imagine. The Vatican has can so far imagine? declined to comment. But can you imagine <laughs> if he loses right. that case? That'd be awesome. Ah, <laughs> oh, man. Well, you I know, as you've got... Haste! Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, books by, like, uh, McDowell, Josh McDowell, the yep. lawyer, Evidence That Demands a Verdict. Uh -huh. it, evidence That Demands a Refund. <laughs> <laughs> this is the case that demands a verdict. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, he his whole claim is that if you brought this stuff, if you brought all this evidence of Jesus' existence into court, yeah. then it would be impossible to deny yeah, and actually, it is. I mean, this has been like a, a, a pet area of study for me lately, given some debates yeah. and everything. And, you know, you look at the, when you, when the first thing you have to do is say, what extra biblical evidence is there that Jesus ever existed? Well, right. almost everything they cite comes from after Jesus is supposed to have died. So, and most of those just reference Christ or Christians or the church, and nobody's denying that there aren't people who believe this. So when Pliny the Younger or Tacitus or somebody writes about and says, hey, we were having problems with these Christians, that's not an affirmation that Jesus actually existed historically. Yeah, then you've the got affirmation of Christians. Then you've got the the Flavius Josephus comments from the Josephus, the Josephus yeah. Josephus Josephus from the uh, Jewish Antiquities and Wars of the Jews, um, but one of those is at least partially a forgery, if not a complete forgery. Right. And the other one only talks about James, the brother of Jesus, and there's nothing there that says it's necessarily talking about the same person. And that was also all written decades after the right. the Bible Jesus was supposedly uh, well, killed. But the the one that came up the other day was from the uh, Sanhedrin. I think it's forty three six. There was a passage which had been um, excised from that book and then later found and discovered and put back in, which says talks about um, a guy named Jesus that that they killed. And all these Christians leap right on it and say, there it is, right there, and it's incontrovertible. Well, you know what? That passage says that they sent out guys for 40-some-odd days before the execution to announce that the execution was coming. Um, the Jesus in the New Testament was tried and executed on the same day. Uh -huh. They couldn't have possibly Ooh. announced it. Plus, that passage talks about a guy who was stoned and hung. Um, that doesn't sound like the <laughs> New Testament guy either. So basically what you have is, this this passage here says, hey, there's this guy named Bob who we stoned and hung, and all these Christians are going, that's my Bob! <laughs> See, that's my Bob, I told you! It's it's absolutely oh. absurd, and they just can't, you know, because, yeah. and the critical thing is, is that, okay, take Socrates, we don't know for sure that he exists, we only know about him from Plato, but nobody's building a religion on him. If Socrates never right. existed, the things that Plato wrote about him are still just as valid. The same isn't true yeah, for it's Jesus. Yeah, the arguments we know about Socrates. Yeah. Not not the same isn't true for Jesus. If you could actually, if you cannot demonstrate that Jesus actually existed historically, 
all of Christianity falls apart because the words are, are this is testified by his existence and without his existence you can't have a crucifixion you can't have a resurrection right. or a path to salvation 